The Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. The Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective, starring Wally Mayer and Kathy Lewis. For once, Mike Shane, San Francisco's favorite detective, is in his office high up in the Rust Building attending to business. Phyllis Knight, his easy-on-the-eyes assistant, is taking notes as their latest clients, inventor William Belsey and Miss Hess, try to explain the unexplainable. Now, let me get this straight, Miss Hess. You have been visiting your aunt in New York? Yes, for six months. I wired Daddy that I would arrive Wednesday, but I managed to get an earlier train and arrive Monday. And the house was all in order when you came home Monday at ten in the morning? Yes, that's right. I expected Daddy for dinner, but... Well, he didn't come home. You didn't call his office and tell him you had arrived earlier than expected? Oh, no. Daddy hated people in the family calling him at the office. And you weren't particularly worried when he didn't come home at all that night? Not particularly. Daddy often stayed at the club. But uh, you didn't call the club, hmm? No. So Monday night he didn't come home, all day Tuesday he didn't come home? Nor Tuesday night, nor all day Wednesday. So it was only because Mr. Belsey called you Wednesday night and said your father had an appointment with him and that your father hadn't showed up? It was for that reason only that you started to worry. No, I wouldn't say that. I worried more and more as the time passed, but you must remember Daddy didn't expect me till Wednesday night. And his appointment wasn't with me exactly. I was going to be there naturally, but the appointment was with Mr. Hackert and Mr. Carter. As uh, I understand it, you, uh, you had an invention which Mr. Hess was going to finance? Actually, he did finance it. He advanced me the money I asked for. But I saw that my estimate was wrong, so I laid the cards on the table and gave Mr. Hess the chance to withdraw. And instead of withdrawing from the venture, he invited Carter and Hackett in on it. Hmm? That's right. And I wanted them to think it over before they accepted the deal. It's pretty much of a gamble, you know. And uh, although Miss Hess maintains that her father hasn't been home since Monday, you saw him at lunchtime on Wednesday. Oh, just for a second. We just happened to be lunching at the same cafe. Uh, you reminded him of the evening's appointment? He reminded me. So today you both decided to ask me to investigate. Well, the idea was Mr. Be Belsey's. He insisted that we do something, so I called the police, but Mr. Belsey said that that wasn't enough, and so we came to you. When did you notify the police? About 11 this morning. I'll get it. Mike Shane, private detective. Hello, Phyllis. Oh, hello, Inspector. Is Miss Hess still in your office? Why, yes, but how... Let me I... talk to her, Phil. Sure, Inspector. Uh, it's for you, Miss Hess. For me? Yes, Inspector. Here, you talk to him. Hello? Miss Hess? Can you come over to Oakland right away? Why, yes, I suppose so. It's important, Miss Hess. It's about your father. You... You mean you found him? Yes, I'm afraid so. Afraid? Then... Then something's happened to him? Yes. Oh, serious? Very serious, Miss Hess. Your father is dead. Dead? You say Daddy's dead? Yes, Miss Hess, your father was murdered. Hello, Mike. Hello, Bill. Inspector. Hello. Thanks for bringing the young lady along. We won't keep you alone, Miss Hess. Just a matter of identification. Of course, from the cards and his wallet and other bits of information, we're certain. I understand. All right, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Is that your father, Miss Hess? Yes, Inspector. That's Daddy. Have you any idea as to who murdered him? No, not so far. We'll want to question you later, of course, to find out, well, whether or not he had any enemies. I'm ready to answer questions now. I'm not the hysterical type, Inspector. So I gather. Inspector. Yes? There, there's something different about Father. And, and not because... Not because he's dead and been in the water? No. I don't know what it is. Just, just different. I see. 
Has the inspector asked about the possibility of your father's enemies? He had none that I know of. How much do you know about Mr. Belsey and the other partners in this deal, Miss Hess, Mr. Carter and Mr. Hackett? Well, I don't know Mr. Belsey at all. I, I never spoke to him before he called up Wednesday night because Daddy didn't, hadn't kept his appointment. You've known the others how long? Ever since I was going to high school. Mm. What, uh, what do you know about them? Well, nothing except that they seem nice. Mr. Shane. Inspector. Yes? I... I know what it is that's different. Oh, yes? Daddy's coat, his overcoat, his umbrella, and his glasses are missing. Well, under the circumstances, glasses and the umbrella being missing uh, is not surprising. Of course, he might not have been wearing his overcoat. Daddy always wore his overcoat. It was one of his distinguishing habits. He never went out without an overcoat. Do you know how many coats he had? Well, yes, he had three, unless he bought one while I was away. Do you mind if we go to your house right now? We might find something there in the nature of a clue. No, I have no objection. Okay. Inspector? Yes? You take Miss Hess. Right. Phyllis and I will take Belsey, and I think the sergeant ought to gather Carter and Hackett, too, don't you? The sergeant already called headquarters and asked them to locate them for good, us. Good, good. Then we'll all meet at your place on Pacific Heights. <laughs> You uh, say, Mr. Belsey, that uh, everything was harmonious at the meeting between you, the murdered man, Hackard and Carter, on Monday night? Well, certainly. There was no reason for anything else. The meeting was held at Hackard's house. We were all agreed. I had the invention, they had the money, and they were willing to start right away. I just wanted them to think it over and take their time. What happened after the meeting? Why, nothing. It was cold, and I drove Mr. Hess over the Bay Bridge. He refused to let me drive him home, so I let him out at the key system depot, and he caught a taxi. You say it was cold? Oh, uh, yes, it was. Tell me, was he wearing his overcoat? Why, no. Was he wearing his overcoat Wednesday when you saw him at lunch? Uh, yes, he was. Mike, hmm? I guess this is the house, the one with the white porch. There's the inspector's car in front. Oh, oh yes, yes. Oh, there you are. Miss Hess is checking the closet for her father's overcoats. I said I'd show you into the living room. In this way. Hackett and Carter are on their way out, Mike. Good, good. Car just drove up outside. Two men getting out. Oh, that's them. Inspector, Daddy's dark blue overcoat's missing. Yeah. And so is his favorite umbrella. The one with the handle carved in the shape of an elephant. Did you say umbrella, Miss? Yes, Sergeant. With the handle shaped like an elephant? That's right. What is it, Sergeant? Well, the headquarters just phoned. They found the umbrella and the overcoat with a pair of eyeglasses in the pocket. Where'd they find them, Sergeant? Washed up at the Yacht Club jetty in Sausalito. What? What? At Sausalito. Well, that's ten miles from from where we found the body. That's funny. It's more than funny, Inspector. It's the first clue yet. The murderer's first mistake. In just a moment, we'll return to Mike Shane and his adventures. The murdered Mr. Hess's overcoat, umbrella, and glasses have been found. Mike, Phyllis, and the inspector are in the inspector's office at headquarters. The sergeant enters. Here you are, sir. Coat, umbrella, and glasses. Oh, the glasses aren't broken. Thanks, Sergeant. Let me see them, Inspector. Oh, wow. Well, pretty strong lenses. Yeah, if he needed glasses like these, he couldn't go very far without them. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. This is the umbrella, hmm? Hey, you, uh, you got a magnifying glass, Inspector? Sure. Did you find something, Mike? A uh, question, maybe. Tell me, Sergeant, which pocket did you find the glasses in? It's in the report, right-hand pocket. Hmm. I see. Inspector? Yes, Mike? Would you mind calling Miss Hess? Find out if her father was left-handed or not. He was left-handed, Mike. She told me that when we were driving out to her home. I was asking about his habits and so on. Ah, uh-huh, I thought so. Here. You see the finger marks on the umbrella handle? Mm-hmm. They're on the left side of the handle. The thumbprint is on the right. Mm. And the glasses were in the right-hand pocket of the overcoat. Yes? A report from Harbor Master says that prevailing currents would never wash umbrella and coat that distance. Mm. The Harbor Master says there's a strong eddy and they were probably thrown in the water only a few yards away at most. Thanks. Ah, oh, it doesn't tell us much. Mm. Only that the murderer threw the coat and umbrella into the bay about ten miles from where the crime was committed. 
It only goes to substantiate murder. We already know that. Maybe we better have in Hackett and Carter. Okay, Inspector. Yes, Inspector. Send in Hackett. Yes, sir. Any ideas, Mike? Yeah. Same as you had. And to go, they don't make much, do they? Sit down, Mr. Hackett. Thanks. Tell us, what do you know about this business? I don't know anything about it. You were in on the business discussions? Certainly, but I hardly think they had anything to do with the murder. Well, we have to start somewhere, you know. Well, then why don't you start with some of the men that Tess quarreled with? Mm-hmm. Well, I happen to be one man with whom he never argued. You're suggesting Mr. Carter? So you're supposed to be the detective. Mm. Ah, but you're doing the hinting. And Carter wasn't the only one who hated Hess. Well, if Carter hated Hess, why did Hess invite Carter into the deal? Hess didn't know that Carter hated him. Well, you're not suggesting that Carter had anything to gain in this venture. That is, by uh, by Hess's death. I'm not suggesting anything. It does seem to me, though, that uh, many people had plenty of reason for killing Hess. Some men hated him. They could have killed him out of anger or revenge. Why look for some financial gain as a motive? We're not. As far as we can see, no one gained anything by Hess's death. Except his daughter, who will inherit a pretty penny. Again, uh, are you suggesting that Miss Hess didn't get all the money she needed from her father? She got all she needed, but not a cent more. Hess was tight. A nickel had to reproduce itself in 12 months or else. And you can't help us any more than that? No. I see. Well, ask Mr. Carter to step in on your way out. Thanks. Well, there's an unpleasant character. Yes, but unnecessarily so. He pretty well removes any doubts as to what we might th- think about money being the motive for murder. Oh, I'm not buying that, Inspector. In its entirety, anyway. Well, oh, but nobody has anything to gain by Hess's death. Sit down, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Tell us, what do you know about this business? I'm afraid I don't know anything about it. You were in on the business discussions? Oh, yes, but I doubt if they had anything to do with the murder. Well, we have to start somewhere, you know. Yes, I realize that, and I'd start if I had any ideas. Uh, Mr. Carter, did you ever quarrel with Hess? Quarrel with him? No, I have often disagreed with him, but I wouldn't call it quarreling. Would you say he had many enemies? Good land, no. He was very businesslike, very brusque. Not at all approachable, if you know what I mean. A man of opinions? Definitely. But he respected other men's opinions, too. And the Monday night meeting was held at Mr. Hackett's house, hmm? Yes, Hackett's was the most centrally located. Besides, neither Hess nor I like to conduct business at home, and Hackett doesn't mind. You get along all right with Hackett? Certainly, I understand him. His bark is worse than his bite. Oh. He's really a very nice fellow. The last you saw of Hess was at Hackett's house, huh? Yes. You made no future appointments with him? No, except the one for Wednesday night. Oh, wait. Yes? Come to think of it, I did say as I was helping him on with his coat that I might see him Tuesday at the club. But you didn't? No, because I didn't go to the club. I was detained on business over in Oakland. I see. And you can't tell us anything more? I'm sorry, no. Thanks a lot, Mr. Carter. We'll call on you if we need you. Well? Not much help. I disagree. What? What? He was a great help. I can't see a suspect in the whole bunch. No, nor can I. All we have is a murdered man. You want me to prove that the murderer is one of the four? Yes, but you can't. One of them lied. Which, Mike? That I don't know, honey. If I did, we'd have the murderer. But that doesn't alter the fact that one of them lied. Well, it is true that Hackett's description of Hess's character is very different from Carter's, but I'd hardly call that lying. Oh, I'm not talking about that. Uh, Inspector. Yes, Mike? Ask the sergeant if Carter and Hackett have left the building yet. Yes, Inspector. Have Carter and Hackett left yet? No, sir. They're standing talking to Miss Hess and Belvey. Good. Uh, tell them Tell them we've got a lead and that Mr. Shane would like to see Miss Hess at her home alone in about 30 minutes. Did you get that, Sergeant? Yes, sir. And uh, see that they all hear it. Yes, sir. Right away. What's the idea, Mike? The murderer has left plenty clues. Oh, I don't know what they are, then. The coat and the umbrella being found so far from the murder. Yeah. The eyeglasses in the right-hand pocket of the coat. Mm-hmm. A deliberate falsehood. One says Hess was wearing his coat. Another says he was not. One says Hess was argumentative. Another says he was not. So what? They're clues, but they don't lead us to anyone. Right, Inspector, right. So we trap the killer. Go on, I'm waiting. The killer's clever, Inspector. Very, very clever. He's covered his tracks beautifully, yet... Yeah, Mike? Yet, like every other killer, he made mistakes. We have found some of these mistakes, but we don't know who made them. So we're pretending that we found a lead. The killer will worry. And try to find out what we know, thereby making another mistake. One that will point the finger at him, huh? Right, Angel, right. 
Now we'll go to the Hess place in my car. I'll drive, and you two keep out of sight. In the back, lie down on the floor. I've got to have the killer believe that I'm meeting Miss Hess alone and that there are no witnesses. Look, Mike, I... I don't like that. Why not? Well, you're practically inviting the killer to take a pot shot at you, using yourself as bait. Mike Shane, I didn't catch on at first. Well, you're not going to do any such thing. Yes, I am. I'm going to catch the killer, and you can help or not. Now, come on, come on, out the back way. I'll drive my car into the police garage, and that way no one will see you two getting into it. <laughs> Oh, I can hardly wait. What have you found? Are you all alone? Yes, except for the maid. No phone calls? No, not a thing. I just got here a few moments ago. No one followed you? Not that I know of. Now, I'm going to look around the driveway here for a minute. Will you please uh, go to the back door and let the inspector and Phyllis in the back way? Yes, of course. No soap, eh, Mike? Uh, apparently it didn't work. Well, I'm just as glad. I can't see any profit in catching a murderer and losing my boss. You expected the killer to follow you. Maybe shoot you because you said that you had found the lead. Well, uh, that was the idea, Miss Hess. But it didn't work. Hello? Inspector there? Yes. It's for you, Inspector. Yes? Just got a report from the surgeon. Yes, Sergeant. The surgeon says Hess was killed Monday night or Tuesday morning. The body's been in the water at least that long. We'll return to Mike and Phyllis in just a moment. Mike's attempt at tricking the murderer into disclosing himself has failed. Now, Mike, Phyllis, and the inspector are walking into a well-known cafe on Geary Street. Well, we'll soon find out whether or not that nice inventor, Belsie, was telling the truth. My guess is that we will. Really? Why do you say that, Inspector? If Belsie had killed Hess on Monday night, he wouldn't try to establish an alibi for himself by saying that he saw Hess on this cafe on Wednesday. <laughs> Why not? You can't tell me that he's so dumb that he thinks we wouldn't check on it. Well, we haven't tried to check on it so far, and the only reason we are checking is because the autopsy surgeon says the body's been in the water since Monday. We would have checked before the case was closed. Uh, perhaps, Inspector, perhaps. But supposing the body hadn't been found for weeks, then the autopsy surgeon couldn't have told the approximate time of death with such closeness. No, that's true. And the murderer probably figured on it being some time before the body was discovered. Uh, in fact, he came darn close to a perfect crime. What do you mean, darn close? It is a perfect crime so far. It won't be. What? what? Oh, I know, I know, I know. I laid one trap and it caught no fish, but we'll get him, Inspector. Well, look, kids, here's the door. Now, who goes first, or do we discuss traps, fish, and Mike's failure standing on the sidewalk? I'll lead, Phil. Right. There, there's the manager. Yeah, I see him. You wish a table for three, sir? Uh, no, thanks. I'm from headquarters, and I want to ask a question. Headquarters? Yes, yes, sir. Can you recall seeing a gentleman in here last Wednesday? He'd be wearing a dark blue overcoat, carrying an umbrella. It's got a carved handle, carved like an elephant. Yeah. So, you do know about him? Yeah. I even remember his name. It was uh, Hess. Why do you remember these details? The gentleman was much disturbed. Oh. He don't want nothing we have on the menu. Mm. He used to get a mad with the waiter. But um, how did you learn his name? Well, while the waiter was getting his order... Yes? A young man had come up to me and he said, Did I hear Mr. Hess's voice a moment ago? I see. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. Mm. Who is this Mr. Hess? Mm. The young man said, he's always carry umbrella and he's wear of glasses. He did. And I said, oh, yes, sure. He's in the third of booth, but he's in a plenty bad mood. <laughs> and the young man will laugh and walk down to the booth. That's all I know. Well, thanks a lot. Well, well, that about fixed an alibi for Mr. Belsey. Yes, despite the autopsy surgeon's statement that Hess was killed Monday. 
No jury's going to convict a man who can produce witnesses who saw them both on Wednesday. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, Mike? No, no, don't rush him, Inspector. That's Mike's thinking look, and it produces results. Honey, I believe I got it. Quick, quick, back to headquarters and have all the suspects brought in. <laughs> Any results, Inspector? Yes, Mike. The boys examined the umbrella and found two different sets of fingerprints. So the umbrella had been handled by someone else besides Hess. Oh, that's not conclusive by any means. Why not? A waiter or anybody could hand a man's umbrella to him, honey. They're working on the coat now. Uh, what about the eyeglasses? I was holding that one back, Mike. There are two sets of fingerprints on the glasses. And too. the two sets on the glasses are the same as the two sets on the umbrella handle? Yes, Mike. Then we've got the murderer. I think so. We have to do this in such a way that the inspector can obtain a conviction. Remember what I said about the jury. Yeah. Yes? <clears throat> Send him in. Now, now remember, at the appropriate moment, I'll spring my story and you two watch like hawks. All right. Sit down, all of you, please. I'm going to ask all of you for your fingerprints. It's a messy business, but nothing to it. Uh, why? Have you, uh, found something? Yes, we have, Mr. Hacker. Daddy's murderer. Yes, Miss Hess. Now, folks, I'll bring you up to date. Mr. Hess was murdered Monday night. Oh, wait a minute. I saw him Wednesday. You're going to stick to that? Well, certainly I'm going to stick to it. Mr. Belsey, I'll give you one more chance to get yourself out of the jam you're putting yourself in by continuing to lie about seeing Mr. Hess on Wednesday. Oh, but I tell you, I did... I'll explain... It's a matter of ordinary police routine to look for the person who last saw the murdered man alive. Well, yes, I know that. The autopsy surgeon says Mr. Hess was murdered Monday. You're insisting on putting the rope around your own neck if you continue to claim that you saw him Wednesday. But I did see him Wednesday, and the people in the cafe can prove it. <sighs> All right, Belsie. You asked for it. Miss Hess, gentlemen, here's how the murder was committed. Mr. Hess was hit over the head Monday night and his body thrown into the bay not far from the key system depot. The murderer kept Hess's coat, umbrella, and glasses. Go on, go on. You catch on quickly, Mr. Carter. The murderer then waited till Wednesday, and wearing Mr. Hess's coat, eyeglasses, and carrying Mr. Hess's umbrella, he made a point of making himself known at the cafe. He then put the eyeglasses in the coat pocket. The right coat pocket, which was a mistake because Mr. Hess was left-handed. But, but he put the glasses in the right-hand pocket, and laying the coat and the umbrella on the chair, he then made himself known to the manager as himself, looking for Mr. Hess, whose voice he claimed to have heard. Mm, clever. Very clever. Diabolical is the word, Mr. Hacker. The murderer then carried the overcoat on his arm, hiding the umbrella, and later that night, threw them into a different part of the bay. But there are a few things that even soaking in the bay won't remove. Fingerprints. Right-hand fingerprints on the umbrella handle. Fingerprints on the eyeglasses. And, oh, yes, hairs on the inside of a coat collar. Yes, Inspector. Bring in the coat, Sergeant. Yes, Inspector. Actually, gentlemen, all we need is the confession. We have the evidence. The hairs on the collar, other than those of Hess, are the hairs of the murderer. And I know who the murderer is. Here's the coat. The hairs are on the report card. Thanks, Sergeant. Well, is somebody going to confess, or do we have to take all your fingerprints and specimens of your hair? Very well. I think we'll start with Mr. Belsey. That way we won't have to go any further. Uh, Why, oh, you're crazy. You can't hang this okay, on me. Okay, Sergeant. Okay, he's going to be stubborn. But take good care of him, won't you? You'll find he's the killer, all right. <laughs> You know, I've been racking my brains all the way home, Mike, hoping I wouldn't have to ask this question. Well, what is it, Angel? Well, all the evidence, if you can call it evidence, could have applied to any one of the suspects. Yes, Angel. Was it a good guess, or were you dead sure that it was Belsey? <laughs> I was dead sure it was Belsey. Oh, I admit I guessed about his method of operation in the cafe, but it was close enough. Well, I still don't know what single thing it was that pinned it on Belsey. But that is from your standpoint. It wasn't a single thing, honey. It was two things. All right, all right then, Clam Shane, give. <laughs> well, in the first place, 
Carter said that he had helped Hess on with his coat at Hackett's house on Monday night. Yeah, that's why Carter was so excited in the inspector's office. He remembered that. Correct. And Belsley lied about it. He said it was a cold night and that Hess didn't have his coat. Ah, yes. And the second point? Well, the second is obvious, my dear. Hess had advanced the money to Belsey. Now, if Belsey didn't go on with the invention, then Belsey was several thousand to the good. Oh. I doubt if Belsey's invention ever existed. The whole thing was a clever confidence trick with murder thrown in. Well, I hope it teaches you a lesson, Mike Shane. Why, Angel? Why me? Oh, just the trouble hairs on a coat collar can get you into. They don't have to be blonde, either. <laughs> Tonight's story was written and produced by David Taylor and based on the character created by Brett Halliday. Music was composed and directed by Bernard Katz. This is John Lang saying good night. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.